Hey there, Ramon Osa with you here. And if you want to hit really big forehands, then you're going to want to watch this entire video because I'm going to break down everything that I've learned over the past 20 years teaching really big forehands in this video. Now, as a disclaimer, I am not going to be giving you a lot of tips, a lot of tricks, and a lot of hacks. Um, we're going to be talking about principles because principles never change. And principles are going to allow you to grow and to improve your forehand without limits so that you can start hitting that ball bigger, more consistently, and so you're the first choice for doubles uh, when you play on the weekends. So let's get started with the first principle, and that is balance, all right? If we're gonna be building a house, then we need a foundation, and balance is your foundation. Now what's crazy is Billie Jean King and her team found out that amateur tennis players are off balance 90% of the time when they're playing matches. And that's primarily because their eyes are shifting during the contact phase. And when your eyes shift, your head shifts, and then you topple over like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So what you'll see here is I'm hitting uh, balls on the eye coach here. And this is really a phenomenal way to feel balance because we remove the number one distraction, which is the ball flying away. And you can really just focus on finishing your shot and staying on balance with your eyes over the ball. As you feel this balance, you're encoding that really nice, stable foundation that we can then use to go to step two with. All right, the second principle is the point of contact. It's the most important point during the entire forehand stroke. You can do everything right, and if you mess this up, then it's not gonna turn out as well as you want. So the way you're gonna feel this, and if you don't have an eye coach, by the way, I'll give you some pointers on how you can feel this, but you wanna have your ball right in the center of the strings. Okay, hitting the sweet spot is the most important part. And if you'll notice my arm here in relationship to the ball, is at about a 45 degree angle into the court. And that's a very special angle in tennis. It's the balance point of the vertical and the horizontal axis. At least that's what someone really smart once told me. Seems to make sense. And all the pros, all the best pros make contact around the 45 degree angle into the court, ideally. So you'll notice it doesn't matter if I'm in an open stance, if I'm in a semi-open stance, if I'm in a neutral stance, uh, closed stance we typically don't want to do because you're fighting your own body. But I've got my point of contact out in front of my uh, body. My arm's at about a 45 degree angle to the court. The ball is somewhere between my knees and my chest or my shoulders. Usually around the hip is ideal. And that's where you want to make contact. That's what you want to practice. So what you're seeing here is, on again, on the eye coach, I can get these reps in really well because there's no variable and I can really solidify that point of contact. I can build that muscle memory in so that when I go to the next steps, it's already ingrained in my muscle memory. So let's go to step three. All right, so let's talk about technique just a little bit, and we're not gonna overblow this because there's plenty of technique videos out there. But I had a coach one time tell me that if you start the stroke right and you finish the stroke right, then the middle has to take care of itself. That being said, I know a lot of us want to understand really what's happening during the forehand stroke, technically. And I'm just going to give you a disclaimer that when you're practicing this, you want to keep it out of your conscious thought process as much as humanly possible, and you really want to feel it. So what I'm going to explain to you now is just so that you can get a mental model, maybe a picture uh, in your mind of what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like, and then you can go out and practice it without hopefully not thinking about it too much. Okay, so in general, we wanna have a little bit of a loop into the swing or a little bit of a rise up into the hit. And the visual I like is a figure eight. So if you see my hand, it kind of rises up into the hit, it drops, and then it comes up into the ball, making this kind of figure eight shape. Okay, is the palm down, is the palm not down? Those are minute details we're not going to get into a whole lot right now, but we've got this general round shape to the swing. And you'll notice that all pros have some version of this. The next thing you want to understand is that the hips really start the stroke. They initiate the entire movement. You don't want the tail wagging the dog, which is when your hand is pulling your hips through, but you want to feel that your hips are pulling your hand through. And there's a little bit of a lag between your hips coming through and your hands coming through. And that's what creates the lag and snap that you hear so much about. So if I think about coiling my hips, my hands start to follow behind it. 
Then as my hips come around the corner, my hand is still trailing behind and that's when you might get a little bit of that lag. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna say about technique. Remember, the most important thing is that your eyes stay on the ball through the contact phase. And again, I can practice this really, really well on the eye coach because the ball's not flying away. So I get my positioning, I'm on balance, ball's right in the middle of the sweet spot. Now I'm gonna start that stroke and I'm gonna hit the ball and leave my eye where the ball was. And I'm gonna sort of play around with that to see how that feels. Now, if you wanna to create topspin really quickly on topspin, it's more of a vertical swing path than a horizontal swing path. What I'm not doing is I'm not rolling over the ball. I'm really coming up the back of the ball. So you can see that on the eye coach. The more vertical the swing path is leading into contact, the more top spin you're going to get. So if we go back to that analogy of the figure eight, um, a really stretched out figure eight that's really skinny would be a very horizontal swing path, would be more of a drive forehand. And if I wanted more spin, I would compress that figure eight. And so now I've got a more vertical swing path leading up into contact. So that's about all I want you to think about in terms of technique. Again, with the technique, get it in your mind of what it looks like and as quickly as you can learn how it feels and then get a bunch of reps in. I prefer the eye coach because you can do it at home. You can memorize that muscle memory. Um, and then when you go out to the court, it's kind of ingrained already. So now let's go to the next step. All right, now that you've got the technique down, what we're gonna do is add a little bit of footwork. And the most important thing about footwork is we're not gonna break down, you know, are you using a crossover step or a shuffle step or a jab step or any of those things. Yes, we can get into that stuff down the road, but the most important thing is that you focus on getting into your best position as quickly as possible. Okay, and now that's gonna be you know, very unique on every given ball. But if we take that, let's say that the ball is here, it's at hip level. What I wanna do is I wanna find my best position. So again, my point of contact is that 45 degree angle. I'm not too close, I'm not too far. I've got the ball right in the center of the sweet spot. And every time I hit the ball, that's gonna be my ideal spacing. And that's what my footwork is going to be uh, used to get me to. So hopefully that makes sense. If I go back a few steps and let's say that imaginary ball is where I need to go, I'll get to the ball and I'll hit the ball. Okay, how many steps I take? In general, take big steps in the beginning, little steps at the end are your adjustment steps. And again, great thing to work on uh, with the eye coach here because you've got a stationary ball initially. It also does moving balls, but you can just practice running up to the ball. Imagining you have to run over to get to the ball, set up, and then hit. And that's an important point. You get to the ball and then hit it. You start thinking about hitting the ball too soon. Um, your position won't be that great. Your balance will be compromised. Uh, and then the whole house of cards falls down. Now let's go to the next step. Now the next uh, principle is timing. Okay, now timing is uh, it's an interesting thing. We wanna hit the ball at the right time because that really allows us to generate more force and to do it with less effort. So we've established a really solid point of contact. We know where that is. We know about our footwork. Now we have to work on the timing aspect. And the biggest thing that you can do with the eye coach is to work on your timing actually. So if I work on hitting a moving ball and I only hit the ball as it comes towards me and I don't hit the ball too soon and I don't hit the ball too late, but right as that arm is becoming vertical, I'm really getting the rhythm and the timing aspect of the stroke down really well. Because your eye is actually, when you're using the eye coach, is doing the scanning, tracking, and focusing that your eye has to do when you're actually on the tennis court. So you're actually practicing the timing element from home. And when we get to the court, which we'll cover in just a second, um, it's an easy transition. Now, when you get a ball that's coming at you from across the net, one thing that I, really helps me um, when I'm thinking about timing, and again, you wanna do this in practice, not when you're playing. We'll talk about playing in just a second. When you're practicing, I like to think of my hands mirroring the flight of the ball most of the time. 
So as the ball rises off my opponent's racket and it's coming over the net, my hands are going to start to rise into the hit. So you imagine the ball is on one plane and my hands are on more or less the same plane. So if that ball is really high up in the air, I might have a little bit of a higher uh, loop, higher take back. If it's really down low, then my hands are going to be a little bit lower. But the level of my hands are going to be on the level of the ball at every point during the flight of the ball that's coming towards you. So hopefully that makes sense. That really helps you stay connected to the ball. The other thing that really helps me is to think about drawing the ball in. Okay, so as the ball's coming from across the net, imagine that you're like reeling in a fish almost. Okay, stay with me here. So as the ball's coming towards you, you're pulling the ball in with your hips. Again, your hands are rising with the ball. And then when it's time to hit, your hips come around the corner and you hit the ball. Okay, so you're bringing the ball in and you're sending the ball out. What you're not doing, ideally, is getting turned really fast and waiting. That's better than not being prepared, but it's not as smooth as it can be and it's not as connected as it can be. What you want to feel is that that smooth reeling in of the ball with your hips, with your hands on the level of the ball, um, and then hitting the ball at the appropriate time. Again, you can master this at home using the iCoach, probably about 90% of those skills do that at home. Now, if you've got a, uh, let's say a really high lob and the ball is going to bounce, obviously you're not going to wait here like this, right? You're going to kind of let the ball bounce. You're going to let it settle and then you're going to go through your swing. Okay. But that's sort of an exception to the rule. These are all sort of principles, but there's always nuance to everything. And let's get to the last part, which is playing. Now, this is a really important point because a lot of people get stuck. They go down this technique rabbit hole. They work on their technique. They, you know, they hit thousands and thousands of balls and they've got all these concepts in their head and they can't switch it off when they get into a match and they end up overthinking. They end up overanalyzing. They get tight and you just turn into a basket case because you're overthinking and overanalyzing everything, which is why I gave you the disclaimer at the beginning. When we think about practicing okay let's think about it in three languages okay the first language is at home at home is where we do the training on the eye coach and by the way if you don't have an eye coach and you want one i'll put a link and a discount code uh, down below that you can go pick one up best investment you can make for your tennis game period um, everything that you do in the future with your coaches with everybody that you learn with will be increased and enhanced by training on the eye coach because you'll learn way faster you get to do a lot more cool stuff and you'll get to stop thinking so much. So the three languages, the first language is at home training. Um, and we've got training videos on the website. When you buy an iCoach that comes with it, uh, those explain the whole system. Um, the second language is on court practice. Okay. And this is where we're really working with the concept of movement and the concept of your targets. Okay. We haven't talked about targets a whole lot, but targets are huge. If you don't have a clear target in your mind, um, then you're kind of shooting into the, into the wind. <laughs> so you want to have a target. The third language is competition. And this is what we call trusting your instincts. Now your instincts, we explain in the training uh, with the eye coach, but essentially you want to focus on getting to your best position as quickly as you can. And then trusting your instincts, your instincts are trained by the repetitions that you're doing at home or on the tennis court so that you've built that muscle memory. You no longer have to think about it because you can trust it. Um, and then you trigger those instincts by getting to your best position as quickly as you can. So there you go. Uh, that's the entire spiel on the forehand. Of course, we could talk about a million different things, but these are the principles that have allowed me to teach players just like you to hit really big forehands uh, really, really quickly and to do it without overthinking and overanalyzing um, and really being able to hit those under pressure. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, um, please click the like button. Let me know in the comments uh, what you got about it, what you're working on, and if there's any other videos that I can make for you. And again, if you'd like an iCoach, uh, go over to the iCoach.com. Use the promo code at the bottom of the screen. Pick one up. It'll be the best investment you've ever made. And thanks again for watching. Click the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. I'll see you in the next video.